Hey everyone, this is Daniel from Century Dashcam. Today I'm going to be walking through the process of setting up an SD card for the Century Dashcam Bridge software running on a Raspberry Pi Zero. So first off, we need to download the two software requirements. Uh, the first one is the Century Dashcam Bridge software. When you click on this for the first time, it may prompt you with an allow for Safari. Since I've already clicked it, it won't do that for me. I've also gone ahead and downloaded this already because it's a it's a quite a long download. Uh, Belina Escher is a free download. This is the utility we'll be using to uh, write this file to your SD card. Now keep in mind this process will uh, permanently format and erase any data on that SD card already. So if you have anything on there today, go ahead and move that off into a safe location. Uh, clicking into Belina Escher, we'll be uh, given this download link here. This should be correct for your uh, operating system. Mine is uh, Mac OS, so it's identified that correctly. Uh, when we click that, it's going to download, and we should see two files in our download section. We should see two files in our download section. Uh, the first is a zip file, and the second is a DMG for uh, Belina Escher. I'm going to go ahead and open up this Belina Escher file and we're going to drag it into our Applications folder. Now I'm going to go ahead and replace the one I currently have, make sure I have the newest version. And we're not going to do anything with the zip file, we're just going to leave it zipped as is. Uh, we are going to go ahead and move into uh, the Applications folder and select Blaine Asher. Open that up. This is the first time we're opening it, so it's going to give us a little alert and we just click Open. Now it's best uh, best practice to unplug any other mass storage devices you have. Um, I'll show you why in a second here. But what we really don't want to do is reformat your uh, you know your external hard drive or something like that. So the first step here is we're going to select the flash file that we've download or sorry the uh, SD card image that we've downloaded. It's going to be this zip file here. This one's from late May. Just use whatever's the most recent from the website. This process uh, will take a few minutes. It's a, it's quite a large file, so you may uh, you may it may just hang here for a second. When it's done, you'll you should you should see the uh, file name here. So we'll give it that a second. And like I said, depending on the speed of your computer, this may take several minutes. Now we see the file name here with the .dot img. You'll notice that that's different than the .dot zip the .dot zip file that we selected previously. It's gone ahead and unpack that there. The next step will select where we're writing this to. Now I mentioned it's important to unplug uh, any external devices that you had other than the SD card that we've plugged in. We see here that I have a mass storage device. Now if I were to click this, it would erase all 500 gigabytes of my mass storage. So obviously be sure that you select the correct one. The name here won't, it will, it's unlikely it'll match your, uh, your SD card name. So you may see untitled as your SD card name, but you'll see mass storage device in almost all cases here. So now that we've selected that, we're going to go ahead and continue. And we should see the option here to flash. Upon clicking flash, we'll be prompted for our computer's password. Again, this is your computer password, um, not any other type of password for the uh, Century build. It's going to go through a decompressing step of that zip file, that original zip file. And after this, we're going to move on into the flashing step. That will be automatic. As you can see here, it's now flashing. We'll give this a minute. While this is flashing, one other important note I wanted to give you is that uh, the SD card, you may be able to flash it through the Pi, but you will have some issues with it. It's important that you use one of the um, SD card uh, adapters directly into your computer. If you don't already have one, there's a few options we've linked below. Uh, f as uh, Those configurations may vary from one device to the next. Uh, if you're on USB-C, uh, you may need to buy an adapter. The flashing process will take several minutes uh, depending on the, uh, your computer and the SD card itself as well as the adapter. Uh, generally speaking, this doesn't take longer than five minutes. But uh, as soon as we get to end to the end of this, it's automatically going to go into the validation state. So we'll give that another minute.
All right, it looks like flashing is almost complete, so it should automatically kick over into uh, verification and validation of the SD card to ensure that everything burned correctly. All right, it's now validating. Now, this next step, uh, after it's completed validating, it should e eject our, uh, our SD card here. So there shouldn't be anything we need to do to unmount it. All right, we're almost done with the validating phase. <clears throat> now, once this uh, ejects, we uh, the next step is to go ahead and move on with assembly of your unit. As we see here, it's it's completed. We can go ahead and just close this out. As I said, there's no uh, no need to eject. You just pull pull the SD card out and go ahead and move forward with the assembly of your uh, Sentry dash cam bridge uh, Raspberry Pi unit. Hey everyone, it's Daniel from Sentry Dash Cam. Uh, today we're unboxing the uh, Vilrose Raspberry Pi Zero Wireless. Um, so what you should have gotten is uh, everything in this box. Uh, and uh, what we'll notice here is that a few things we actually won't be using for this. The, the kit actually comes with quite a bit of um, parts and this is to support several different types of projects. Uh, for our purposes, we're only gonna need a few of these things, um, but it comes with everything you need to do all kinds of Raspberry Pi projects. So uh, the power supply, we're actually not going to use for this because we're going to be powering our device off of the uh, Tesla. So uh, we'll go ahead and set that aside. It comes with an adapter cable, which you may find useful. You can use this potentially with uh, your Tesla as well, but you'd need another adapter cable here. Uh, we, make, we have a different rep, uh, cable we recommend, so we'll show that to you in a second here. Uh, this adapter piece right here is if you wanted to plug your Raspberry Pi Zero into a uh, into a TV or a monitor. This is an HDMI to micro HDMI adapter. Obviously, we're not going to need that for this project. And here we have the uh, the ribbon cable, and you would typically use this for um, doing a camera project. You'll see with the uh, the box you got here, we had a, a few different case accessories. Uh, this camera cable is long, is, is, uh, goes uh, along with this uh, faceplate right here with the hole in it, which is for camera. So we'll go ahead and set that one aside. We don't need that. As far as the other face place, face plates go, uh, this one is meant to be used with these header pins for um, different types of connections. We, we won't need this one, so we'll set both of these parts aside as well. So the, the key piece that we have here remaining uh, is the uh, what came in this bag right here. This is an anti-static bag. If you're needing to put your Raspberry Pi aside for any reason, hold on to this bag. It came, comes with a little uh, Ziploc connection here. This will prevent you from damaging the, uh, the Pi uh, with static or anything like that. Set that aside for the time being. Uh, what I have here is is a, uh, is a heat sink that we've already applied. Now, this heat sink will have come with a little blue translucent sticker attached to the bottom. Now you just peel that off and apply that right here. That sticky stuff is like a, a thermal paste that's used for transferring the uh, heat from the chip to this heat sink here. I've seen people use uh, stacks of pennies with thermal paste. Really, we're just trying to disperse a little bit of this heat. It isn't going to do a, a ton, uh, but it should help with some of what we're doing. The, uh, the other thing we would have gotten in the kit is the rubber bumpers. It would have been a uh, square, black square like this, with little black nubs on it. Now I've already gone ahead and peeled those off and applied them here. Save you the time in the video. Give you a little sticky traction there. Um, when mounting it in your Tesla, you may choose to use something like a double-sided sticky uh, tape with Velcro, so you can get that uh, on and off. I mentioned that the uh, solid black, uh, or in, uh, in this case it's black, but the solid covered uh, top of the case is the one we're going to go ahead and use today. Uh, we'll show you how to get that in there in a second. Now at this point you should have already uh, re received and flashed your SD card. Now choosing the right SD card is important. We recommend the SanDisk Extreme Pro cards. Uh, these series of cards operate at a much higher speed and are meant for, continue, for rewriting uh, quite a bit. If you have a micro SD card laying around, you may be tempted to use that and it should get, get you by for a little while. You'll find that in a lot of cases they may start uh, failing. So uh, they can only support up to a certain number of writes and uh, they generally aren't rated for this type of, this type of work. So you wanna 
you want one that's um, a little more reliable. So we'll, we'll link the below. Um, link below is a few other options for SD cards there. Uh, I, I think you can get away with a 32 gig as far as the Tesla is concerned. Uh, I would recommend no smaller than 64 gig. I'm going to set this red card aside. You also get to need a little sticker and some contact information. This card right here is um, for other types of uh, DIY projects. So we'll set that aside. Uh, one important thing to talk about is, is the cable we actually use to power the Tesla. Now, um, you may be tempted to use a cable you have laying around. These thinner cables can work. We've seen them work. We, uh, sometimes they're not uh, very reliable. Power through the cable is important, and making sure that we get uh, enough power to the device and it's consistent it is very important to making sure this works. So um, you're welcome to try uh, one of these cables. Uh, linked below is the... It's our recommended cable. This is an anchor cable. You can choose whatever length you want. The shorter, the probably the better. Um, you can see how nice and thick this is compared to some of the thinner, more flimsy cables. And this one's got a lot of rigidity in it. This is a really good cable. Um, there's two places to plug that this, this cable will fit into this board, but um, they, they are not equal. Uh, this one right here is power, so most people will be uh, inclined to plug into that one. Uh, because the Raspberry Pi, in this case, is acting as a USB uh, flash drive, we need to plug into the data port. So that's going to be this one right here. And uh, when we get the case together, it'll be the one in the middle. Uh, so mo moving on to inserting the SD card. As I said, you would have already had to flash this with uh, Escher uh, before inserting. And you're going to want to, the reason you're going to want to do that is once we get this case together, it's a little hard to get back out. And the SD card uh, needs to go in beforehand. You can't uh, take the SD card out once the uh, Pi is in the case. So obviously the orientation of this card matters quite a bit. Uh, if, if you're not paying attention, you could insert this into the uh, HDMI port right here. It will probably fit. It won't work. Uh, what we want to do is make sure these gold contacts are facing the uh, PCB board. That's the screen board right here. The logo will be facing out. As you slide this in here, you'll actually see this back spring in the window here indicate that this is all the way pushed in. You don't need to force it any further. It's not going to go all the way in. You'll notice if you flip it around, there's still a little bit of that lip there. That's totally normal and expected. If you need to get this back out, there's usually a lip on the SD card itself. You can use your fingernail there to pull it back out. Um, whatever you do, be careful with this because, again, these are very delicate um, component parts. And try your best to hold this from the outer edges. It will hold up to touching these, um, but it's all sensitive in here, so be very careful while touching it. It's a little more durable once you get it into the case, though, so let's go ahead and do that. You'll notice uh, the connection uh, holes here for these um, ports. I'm going to line those up in here, and there's also four little um, po uh, poles right there. I'm going to want to make sure we align the holes of the board with those. Don't move this around too much or use this to maneuver the board. Uh, remember, it's only being held on by a little bit of sticky stuff, and if we wear that out, it won't make a good connection, and it won't do anything for us. You'll notice here that it clicks into place. There's a little plastic tab. Make sure that's sitting under that and not floating around. Uh, at that point, we can go ahead and just slide this in, and you'll notice that it is pretty snug on there. So getting that back off is going to be um, a little difficult. You'll have to use your nail or a uh, uh, flathead screwdriver, but I'd recommend trying to use your nail first, or if you have a, a poly pry bar, that would be ideal. Uh, this right here is the port we want to plug into. This is the data port. Now, you remember I mentioned this one says power, or this was uh, on the board it says power. Out here it actually just gives you the power symbol. We don't want to plug into there. If that's um, something you've worried about uh, forgetting, you can go ahead and just place a piece of tape covering that port so you don't actually pl accidentally plug into there in the future. Uh, from there, we we'll want to make sure we get the alignment correctly. Unlike uh, the other end of this USB cable, the orientation um, is a little more obvious. So we'll plug it in right there. And from here, you can plug this directly into your Tesla. Uh, one other note is, depending on the, the case you, um, you ordered, you may get one of these clear plastic ones. As I mentioned before, the the top plate you choose doesn't matter too much. This clear plastic one with this open case will work just fine. Um, it's really up to personal preference. We, we chose the uh, filled in black one for this one. 
but uh, these kits are all pretty similar. The important takeaway here is that we have the board, the case, and the SD card with the uh, this connector here, and we're plugging into this port. And that's all for us today. Thanks for watching.